In the last few hours, cameras over Campi Flagre have shown something that should worry anyone living near Naples. A whole valley at Pisciarelli, just above the caldera, was filled from the ground, up with a low white layer of volcanic steam and gas. The vent had been jetting mud and steam through the night, and by morning the cloud was sitting exactly where people live, trapped between houses and hills with almost no wind to move it away. What you see in those images is only part of the story. Mixed into that white steam is carbon dioxide, a gas that is heavier than air, completely invisible and able to push oxygen out of basements, garages, and low rooms without any smell or warning. In the same valley where mud is now erupting in jets six or seven meters high and temperatures at the vent are over 100 degrees Celsius that CO2 can quietly slide downhill and collect in the very lowest houses. For the families who live there, the danger is not a dramatic explosion, but the possibility of walking into a pocket of air that simply does not have enough oxygen left to breathe. What makes this even more unsettling is what is not happening. There is still no continuous monitoring of CO2 inside the most exposed homes even after earlier checks showed how easily gas can build up in low-lying spaces. Temporary measurements were done for a few days in the past and then stopped while the vents have continued to release hot gas every hour of every day. The ground keeps cracking and rising under the slow Brady schism of the caldera. Small earthquakes continue to rattle old buildings, and yet the one thing that could give residents real-time warning inside their own rooms, permanent gas detectors, is missing. At the same time, nearby Solfatar is venting at temperatures close to 180 degrees Celsius, and the Astroni crater shows a lid of white condensation sitting over its rim like a cap on a pressure cooker. All of these signs point to a system that is not asleep. Half a million people live on top of this restless caldera. The question for them is no longer whether Campi Flagre is active. The question is how much they really know about what the gas is doing around their homes when the cameras and headlines turn away. In the next part of this video, we will look at how gas behaves in places like Pisciarelli and Solfatara, why valleys and low streets can become natural gas traps, and what that means for people living at ground level in one of Europe's most closely watched volcanic areas. From a distance, the gas at Pisciarelli looks simple. It rises, it drifts, and eventually it seems to disappear. Up close, it behaves very differently. The mixture that shoots out of the vent is hot and buoyant at first, but as it spreads, it cools. The water vapor begins to condense, and the heavier components, especially carbon dioxide, stop climbing and start sliding. They follow the slope of the ground like an invisible liquid flowing into every dip, gutter, and hollow that lies below the vent, instead of escaping cleanly into the sky. In a landscape like Campi Flagre, that matters. This caldera is a patchwork of shallow bowls, old craters, and low streets tucked between small ridges. Many older houses sit in the lowest available plots, sheltered from wind, and built close to the ground. Those are exactly the places where heavier gas tends to settle on still nights. What the drone sees in the morning as a soft lid of white steam over the valley can translate at street level into a thin layer of air near the floor that simply does not contain as much oxygen as it should. A child bending down to pick up a toy, someone walking into a poorly ventilated basement, or a pet lying to sleep on a cool concrete floor may be the first to meet that layer long before anyone smells sulfur or sees anything unusual. Small changes in the ground can open new paths for gas. When minor earthquakes crack old pavements or, or, or widen existing fissures, they give gas fresh exits in places where no one is looking for it, a courtyard drain a gap along a wall, a line in a garden path. On windy days, that extra seepage may disperse quickly. On calm nights, it adds one more source, feeding the same low-lying pockets. The result is that danger is not confined to the dramatic vent on the hillside. It can migrate quietly into stairwells, storage rooms, and ground floor spaces a long way from the main fumarole in houses that look completely normal from the outside. For people living in these neighborhoods, understanding this behavior is not a theoretical exercise. It is the difference between thinking the problem is up there at the crater and recognizing that gas can reach the doorstep in the lowest room of the house. In the next part of this video, we will look at what kind of monitoring exists today around Campi Flagre, where the biggest gaps are inside the most exposed homes, and what simple tools could turn invisible gas into something that can be detected and acted on before it becomes a silent threat. If you look at Campi Flagre from above, it is easy to think that everything is under control. 
There is a dense network of seismometers listening for every small earthquake. GPS stations track how much the ground is rising or sinking. Thermal cameras and gas instruments watch vents at places like Pisciarelli and Solfatero, measuring temperature and the composition of the plume. On paper, it is one of the most closely monitored volcanic systems in Europe. Daily bulletins talk about the number of quakes, the centimeters of uplift, and the heat coming from the fumaroles. For people living far away that can create a reassuring picture, experts are watching, instruments are working, and any change will be spotted in time. But the images from Pisciarelli tell another more uncomfortable part of the story. The monitoring that is strongest is focused on the vents and the deep system earthquakes ground deformation gas at the source. Much weaker is the monitoring where people actually breathe. In some of the lowest houses near the valley, there is still no continuous measurement of carbon dioxide inside basements, garages, or ground floor rooms, despite earlier checks that showed how easily gas can build up in low spaces. Temporary campaigns have been carried out in the past with sensors installed for a few days to take snapshots of indoor air. Then the equipment was removed. Reports were written and life was meant to go back to normal while the vents continued to release gas day and night. The gap between these two levels, the caldera as a whole and the single house at the bottom of a slope, is where many residents now feel exposed. They hear that the volcano is being watched, but they do not have a small, simple device on their own wall that would tell them if the air in their most vulnerable room was changing. They know that earthquakes are recorded and mapped in real time, but they are less sure who is checking the stability of older buildings that have already cracked from recent swarms. In neighborhoods like those around Pisciarelli, the question is no longer whether the system is monitored. It is who, if anyone, is responsible for turning that information into practical protection at the scale of a single family home. In the next part of this video, we will move from the instruments to the people. How families living on the flanks of Campi Flegre trying to protect themselves, what simple tools could close the gap between expert monitoring and daily life, and how communities can build their own layer of early warning while the deeper caldera continues to breathe beneath them. For families on the slopes of Campi Flegre, the caldera is the background to ordinary life. Children walk to school past fumaroles laundry, hangs between balconies above cracked pavements, and traffic squeezes through narrow streets that follow old crater rims. Most days feel completely normal. Then a small earthquake rattles dishes in the kitchen, a fresh crack appears in an old wall, or a stronger smell of sulfur drifts in on a still morning, and everyone is reminded that the ground under their feet is not just city ground, but the rim of a restless volcanic system. In neighborhoods near Pisciarelli and Solfatechera, many people have already adjusted in quiet, practical ways. They know which corners of the valley sit lowest after heavy rain, which basements always feel damp, and which rooms become stuffy when the wind drops. Some families choose to sleep on higher floors when they can. Others keep storerooms and cellars closed at night and only go down during the day. A few have installed simple carbon dioxide detectors in their lowest rooms or small fans to clear stagnant air from stairwells and storage spaces. None of these measures change the behavior of the volcano but they do change how exposed the household is to gas that might creep in during a calm, cool night. Community ties often become a second layer of early warning. Local chats and neighborhood groups share news when tremors are felt, compare photos of new cracks, or pass around drone footage showing gas pooling in valleys so that people a few streets away can see what is happening above them. After a stronger swarm of quakes, someone checks on older neighbors. Parents talk to each other about which routes to avoid if roads are damaged or if an evacuation is ever ordered. The challenge is to stay ready without staying afraid. Reacting to every tremor as if a major eruption were imminent is exhausting. Ignoring every advisory is dangerous. Most residents are trying to find a middle line to follow official bulletins to ask questions when something does not add up and to build a small layer of protection at home while still living a normal life. For viewers watching from outside Italy, these choices are not unique to Campi Flegre. They mirror the quiet preparation in many restless regions from towns near Etna to communities along fault lines in Japan and California. In the final part of this video, we will bring these threads together, gas in valleys, gaps in monitoring, and daily life on the slopes, into one clear message about what Campi Flegre is really telling us right now 
and why calm informed preparation matters more than fear or denial. When you put all of these pieces together, Campy Flagre is sending a clear, if uncomfortable, message. Vents like Pisciarelli are not just curiosities on the hillside. They are open windows into a system that is very much awake beneath a densely populated area. Gas is filling valleys on calm mornings. Heavy components like carbon dioxide are sliding into the lowest corners of the landscape and temperatures at nearby vents remain high. At the scale of the whole caldera, seismometers, GPS stations, and gas instruments are listening and watching almost constantly. At the scale of a single house at the bottom of the slope, the picture is less complete. The air in the rooms where people actually sleep and store their belongings is still largely unmeasured, even as small earthquakes cracks in rising ground remind everyone that this basin is not standing still. That does not mean an eruption is guaranteed or imminent. It means that living safely on the slopes of a restless caldera depends on more than watching distant graphs. It depends on recognizing that invisible gas can be a real hazard in low-lying, poorly ventilated spaces and on closing the gap between expert monitoring and everyday life. Simple tools, a gas detector in a vulnerable room, a way to ventilate stale air, a family plan for what to do after stronger tremors or new advisories can turn a vague sense of fear into concrete steps that lower risk. At the same time, residents have a right to clear information to know what is being measured, where the blind spots are, and what authorities are doing to protect the most exposed homes, not just to track the behavior of the caldera at depth. For those of us watching from outside Campi Flegre is more than a dramatic name on a map. It is a case study in how modern societies live with complex, slow building hazards, not a single explosive moment, but a long negotiation between science institutions and daily life. The lesson is not to panic at every image of steam, nor to dismiss concerns as exaggeration, but to stay calmly informed, to pay attention when new patterns appear, and to support the kind of monitoring that reaches all the way from the vent to the front door. If you want to keep following this story and other stories of volcanoes, earthquakes, and extreme weather around the world, consider subscribing to this channel and turning on notifications. That way, when the next important signal comes from Campi Flagre, or any other restless system, you will hear about it with context, not just headlines.